Hey guys, welcome back. Well, this is a video I didn't want to make. A not so funny thing happened on the way out to the backyard last night. Actually, it wasn't on the way out to the backyard. It's just that I wasn't getting any good images after switching my SCT over from using the focal reducer back to its native focal length. And I kept getting these stretched stars and they're not what you think. We see stretched stars all the time. This is something else, and I wanted to bounce some of my ideas off of you, and hopefully you'll have an idea of what this actually is so I can fix it, because some of my ideas about what it might be are pretty scary. Let's get started. The whole idea behind the imaging plan this year was to stick with the SCT for the full year. Start off with the uh, C925 at roughly 13, 18 millimeters effective focal length with the focal reducer installed. Take care of some of the big targets like the Leo triplet, M101, M94, and so on. And then switch over to the Antlia dual band filter to pick up some SHO targets, and I'll do a video on it shortly. I got three targets, and we'll talk about that along with some changes I made to the imaging train to try to deal with some of these stretched stars in the corners. Not the stretched stars we're talking about in this video, but ones where back focus just isn't quite right. Now, I didn't have any issues. Everything seemed to work pretty well, so the next thing I did was to reconfigure the SCT back to the native focal length by removing the focal reducer. Usually when I'm imaging in October, I'm using my refractor, and I end up missing some pretty good targets. My imaging calendar looks like this during October. There's some nice targets that are optimally placed at this time of the year, or at least in October, when you can get the maximum number of hours on the target, such as M74 and M77, NGC 891. A lot of good targets, but targets that are really only suitable for the SCT at its native focal length. So I wanted to hang around with this scope, use it for the rest of the year, and try to capture some of these targets that I just miss. And then I had a problem on that first night when I started using it. When you change the focal length, you got to go find focus again. Fortunately, I've imaged with this setup in the native focal length before, so I just went back to the records, previous images, and saw what the focal position was at that time and set the focal position to that same number for this time. And you can see here in this zoomed-in picture of stars, I'm pointing, I'm in the home position, I'm not tracking, and I'm getting the characteristic out-of-focus look of the donut for the SCT, and I'm getting some blur, but I attribute that to the fact that I'm not tracking. It's a six-second exposure, and there's a little bit of movement, so I get some blur, so that's fine. And then I changed the focus a bit, trying to tighten it up so that at least I could get the plate-solving software to recognize stars and tell where it's pointing ultimately. And this is what I came up with. And again, I'm not too surprised by this. I'm getting now thin streaks, which means I'm in better focus, but I'm still getting the streaks, which is acceptable given that I'm still at a six second exposure. But after looking through the rest of the image from the rest of the night, I went back and did some calculations on this to see if this stretch is reasonable. This is about a 21 pixel span that the star is stretched over. And you can calculate the distance from the center of the North Celestial Pole to the star based on the length of the star as it stretched, the time of the exposure, which is six seconds, and the rotation rate of the Earth, which is, of course, 360 degrees in 24 hours. And when you put those numbers in, you come up with a distance from this star to the North Celestial Pole of about 5.5 degrees. That's a bit high, but it's not unreasonable. There could be a little bit of deck error and a little bit of RA error in my home position so that it's not exactly pointed towards the uh, North Celestial Pole. So this is not that big of a surprise. And I figured I was still good to go. I've got better focus now. So ready to move on and, and do some imaging. First thing I did when I got to NGC 6871, a star cluster. I like to use star clusters when I'm getting first focus on a SCT after I've changed its configuration, just because there's a lot of good stars there to use for the focus algorithm. I did a plate solve on that and found that the effective focal length is 2303 millimeters, which is pretty close to what I had last year at 2310. I have changed some things in the way of the adapter stack up that I'm using. So it's not surprising at all to be just a tiny bit off from that. So that's not too surprising. What was surprising is that this is what the stars look like. Certainly it does not look like they are in focus. So this is where I let the Nina autofocus routine take control of this and uh, try to find focus from here. And it utterly failed. And when you take a closer look, you see that it's not really out of focus. I'm getting some stretched stars. Now the stretched stars are not in the RA direction. They're in this kind of canted direction over here, but these are not 
out of focus stars. It kind of looks like perhaps some mount tracking issue, maybe a gear problem inside the mount, and that's a pretty scary proposition in and of itself. It doesn't seem, at least based on this image, that I'm having an RA tracking issue because the streaks should be aligned with the RA direction, and they just aren't. So I tried focusing with a Batonoff mask and with a tri Batonoff mask. In both cases, I can come up with something that kind of looks like focus. The diffraction spikes are a bit wide because we're not dealing with point stars. We're dealing with stretched stars. And as far as the tri Batonoff mask goes, it is helpful for identifying if you have a collimation problem. This is about what it would look like before I had this issue. It is not perfect collimation, but it is not bad collimation either. But the focusing appears to work, so certainly the focuser is moving the mirror. I'm able to get what looks like focus with the Batonoff diffraction spikes, and collimation doesn't seem all that bad relative to how it was working back when the scope was producing circular stars. So then I went back over to M29 for some more testing, and once again, I'm getting the same stretch stars. Now, one of the things about this, as you can see, this is a 0.25 second exposure using the L-Pro filter. So it seems to have this kind of uh, bright spot, dim bright spot, almost like it's holding its position, slips, and it goes to a different position and holds that for a while. But again, these lines aren't lined up with the RA axis. So now, another reason I don't think it's tracking, I took another exposure, a much longer exposure, after going out to the mount, pulling out the L-Pro filter and putting in the Antlia dual band filter. This is a 10 second exposure and it was taken 14 minutes later because it takes me some time to do all that going in and out stuff. And you can see that the length of these stars is about the same in both. Another thing you can see is that the star field I'm zoomed in, but you can see from the sliders here, I'm zoomed in in the same area of the image. This one taken 15, 14 minutes before, and you can see that the stars are the same stars, but they have drifted a bit. I'm not doing any guiding, so the mount is just tracking, and it's doing a pretty good job of, of holding steady with the stars, given, again, that's a 14-minute period without guiding. If you thought it might be a tracking issue, then why, with a 10-second long exposure relative to a quarter second exposure, why am I not getting 40 times the length of the stretch here? The stretch is the same regardless of the exposure. So that tells you it's probably not a cable drag problem. By the way, I checked to see if there were cables when I went out to switch the filter. No cable issues. And it doesn't appear to be a tracking problem. Could this be an ASI 294MC camera issue? No. If you look in the guiding graph, you can see that the ASI-174, which is the guide camera here, is seeing the same sort of thing. So the characteristics of the light getting to the ASI-294MC are the same characteristics as getting to the guide camera. Now you'll notice this piece here where it uh, kind of went crazy. That's because I was outside. I put my ear up against the mount motor to see if I could hear any grinding in the gears. I heard nothing. Everything that I'm seeing here is making me think that it's not a mount issue and it's not a camera issue. So what the heck could it be? So the thing that I'm thinking of now is, could it be that the primary mirror connection to the central tube has somehow failed in allowing the mirror to tilt? So maybe instead of this, I'm getting that. And maybe there is a permanent tilt in the mirror right now that is causing those stretch stars. I don't know how plausible that is, or even if this kind of failure mode would actually lead to the stretch stars. This is a tough problem to fix. I can't fix it from outside the body of the OTA. It seems like it's something that will have to be sent in to Celestron for repair. And an internal optical tube problem is scary. So just to summarize, everything was working great until it wasn't. How many of us can tell that story in this hobby? You do things for 10 days in a row, everything's working great, then you go out that 11th night, and all of a sudden nothing seems to work. It's just part of the process here in astrophotography. I did change my setup from when the SCT was working with the focal reducer. I took that out and put in some other adapters to get back to the native focal length. The tri off and Batonoff mask focusing seems to work pretty well, at least considering that I'm focusing on a stretched star instead of a point star. So at least that part seems to be working. Plate solving confirms that the focal length is the same as last year, or 
pretty close. The star streaks are not aligned with the RA axis. They seem to be fixed in one direction, regardless of where the telescope is pointing, which again kind of points to me back to an, an optical issue rather than, of course, anything with the mount. They're the same length regardless of how long the exposure is, which again tells you it's not the mount. So I think I've done everything I can to really rule out that the mount is responsible for these effects. That's now been confirmed with my imaging last night with the ED-102 on the same mount. No stretch stars. I have sent an email to Celestron support and we're starting to communicate and trade information back and forth. But you guys who have been using SDTs for a long time, or maybe even a Newtonian, perhaps you've seen this sort of thing before and can give me some pointers on how to fix it and what the problem might be. So I'm throwing up the bat signal and eager to hear what you might have to say. Okay, guys. Well, clear skies. I wish I had something more fun to talk about, but that's the way it goes in this hobby. Talk to you later.